you still the only one here? That's unusual. People will be here. All right, is this room locked? Oh, let me unlock it. There was a blood donor clinic in here yesterday, so they locked the whole place up. There we go. Now it feels like home again. Uh, no, we have a one hour lesson and that's it. Can I get your punch card, Kate, please? Can I get your punch card, please? Get your punch card? Oh, yes. Thank you. Sometimes all the other ladies come together, so. Sure. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Yay! There they are. They all came together. Morning. Morning. 
Okay, we're getting started in two minutes. Better hurry. No? Is there one in is there one in there? No? Okay. Okay. But the, these are only one punch. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Punch it somewhere. Oh, there is one. There's one left. Just hit Joan in the face. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. I didn't realize. I thought they were all done. There you go. Thank you. I thought you were carrying around an empty card. I did. Crazy. All right. So we have four. There's supposed to be five of us. We'll see what happens. You guys know Kate? No. No? I thought you played here. I thought you played here. Off and on, okay. Uh, we'll do name tags then if everybody doesn't know each other. Give me a second. I know. But if I give you ones that stay on, then you can't get them off me. It would leave glue to your shirt. So. There you go. And there should be one more because there was five registered. So we'll see who it is. Let's see if they show up. Yeah, you, yeah, you guys can't. We had to do that because people are shopping. People, uh, especially in the intermediate groups and advanced groups, they they shop. They sign up to see who else has signed up, and if they don't like them, then they unsign up. Oh, no. So it leaves vacancies. So we just hit it all. And if you want to play, come and play. If you don't want, it, if you want, if it's important to you who's there, come and see. And if you don't like it, then go home. Yeah. But it's going to cost you. <laughs> all right. So you four of you ladies can start warming up. Um, there is a ball machine in the back court of each court, so be careful about that. There we go. Here's our fifth. I got it. Sure. What's your first 
your first name? Donna. Donna. Hi, Donna. I'm Coach. I'll, I'll create a name tag for you. You play here, right, Donna? I've been here uh, to, for um, to play with you. Okay. I've been twice. Okay, awesome. So well, you're a member here, right? You must have done, otherwise, you wouldn't have been able to register, yeah. All right, everybody, this is Donna. Don, is, uh, Don and I are just going to warm up over here. So just come on in for a second. Come on in for a second. So this is a, a clinic today. So we're going to have a very, very short warm-up. Normally the warm-up is a major part of what we do, but today we're going to have a very short warm-up, and then we're going to jump right into the teaching component. So Don and I will warm up over there for a few minutes, and then we'll come back. You guys can do the structured warm-up if you want. If you don't want, you can do something else. Do a freestyle warm-up. That works fine for me. Okay, Donna, let's go over and warm up a little bit. I did something to my arm. Got tired? Uh, Got a little tired, did it? it it's it's protesting quite a bit. So, uh, just so you know, I, I did have a question for you. Just yeah. to mention in the future. Yeah. You need to be strengthening your cervical exercises. Yeah. You should probably start thinking about that. Yeah. And also today, I might need to take it easy for a while. Okay, we're not going to be doing any big swings today. Everything will be short swings, so you should be fine. But there's a lot of videos on YouTube for your triceps. Okay, awesome. We're just going to just think it back and forth nice and easy. Just going to do a little warm up. The technique is awesome. Good. You both play here? Okay. 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 Awesome. Yeah. That's one of the keys. You got to book early. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we'll have indoor here as well. So you can do both. You can do both. The advantage to Cedar Bray is uh, no smoke, no wind, no rain, no bugs, no wind. Uh, here, a uh, year and a half. But I started teaching pickleball here 15 years ago, so. I uh, started the programs here, so. All right, okay, so that's it. We're, we're gonna keep our warm up abbreviated today. Today we're working on blocking. Does everybody know what blocking is? It's where we're at the net and our opponent's not and they hit a hard shot towards us and we just wanna block it and get it back into the court. All right, so on blocking, most of our shots are going to be backhands because if they're out here, we're going to hit a backhand. If they're here, we're going to hit a backhand. If they're right at our body, we're going to hit a backhand. The only time we're ever going to hit a forehand is when it's out on this side of our body. Right? So there's four blocking positions. One, two, three, four. Three of the four of them are on our backhand side. Okay? One of them is on our forehand side. 
So this court is set up to practice mostly forehand, so some at, right at your body, some forehands. You occasionally want to go out further to your backhand side. First of all, is everybody here right-handed? Yes, they are. That's awesome. Okay, that machine is set up for primarily backhands. I'm going to do demonstrations on both of the machines to show you what we're going to be doing. Uh, then I'm going to, we're going to get you just get doing lots and lots of reps with the ball machines today. Now, the ball machine, I'm going to teach you how to practice with the ball machine today, how to practice blocks with the ball machine. And after today, if you want to book the ball machine to, ball, to, to practice yourself or with one of your friends here, you can. So, unless the facility's booked for other reasons, seven days a week we have a ball machine available here. Every morning, 6 a.m., right? You'll, you'll, you'll have to get up early, but normally to rent a court, in a, normally to rent a court, if you're going to go to YYC or Pickleball Center to rent a court and the ball machine, you're looking at north of $50. Here, you get a court and a ball machine for $8. So it's worth getting up for. You've got to give up a little bit of sleep, but you don't have to do it every day for the rest of your life. You do it for a few times to just get some practice in. Okay? Yeah, it's an, it's an awesome opportunity for our members to you know, spend an hour with the ball machine. And you can come in pairs or by yourself, whichever you prefer. So, yeah. So, I'm going to get everybody on this sideline right here. And, oh, I am. Yeah, yeah. I'm here every day at 5.30. All right, so this is this this machine's mostly forehands, and we're going to be blocking them. I'll just let me demonstrate what they look like. That's it. So that's what it'll look like. I'll go through the technical details in a minute. Let's go over to the other machine now. Val, I'm going to get you to be my assistant, okay? Sure. This top red switch here, when I tell you to, you're going to turn it on. Yep. And when I tell you to, you're going to turn it off, okay? So you can leave the balls. Well, I'll pick them up in a minute. All right, Val, can you turn it on, please? Okay, just let me demonstrate how this machine's going to work. So I'm standing at the T. Right here, the T's in my feet, right behind the kitchen line. Oh. All right, Val, you can shut that off. All right. Okay, so that's how the two machine works. <clears throat> Pretty simple, right? Excuse me. I got a frog in my throat. <clears throat> All right. Okay, so the teaching points for the volley. We want to keep the racket in front of us, both for forehand and for backhand. The racket stays in front of us. We, we're not taking a swing at it. Did you notice I'm not doing a swing? I'm just sticking the racket out and I'm blocking it. <coughs> so I want, I want to block at a comfortable distance out front of my body, somewhere between my body and the net, right? at a high enough point that I can get it over the net, right? Um, ideally, I want to take it at the highest point possible out in front of me. <coughs> Excuse me, some balls are going to drop down really low below the net. You're still taking it at the highest point that you can reasonably get to. Um, so we don't, what I mean is we don't want to back up and take them low. We want to try and take them high as possible. Okay, so I'm going to demonstrate those three teaching points. Can you turn that back on? Okay, so the racket's out in front of me. I'm keeping the racket out in front of me. I'm going to try and take the ball at a high point, and I'm not going to swing. Not really. Give it a little push. And notice, oh, that was a low one. So I give it a tiny little push. But I'm not doing a big swing, right? I'm not doing a big swing. I'm just blocking. Okay, you can shut that off, Val. Any questions about that? Because it's going to go out. Yeah. 
Um, there, there are swing volleys, um, but we don't start there. When you first learn to volley, you just block. The, what we're working on today are blocks, specifically. Okay? So, we're going to learn how the ball machine works and how to rotate on this machine. So I'm going to take half of you over to the other machine. Okay? Now, there are tubes in the room. There's one there, and there's one here. Let me show you how the tubes work. All right, so the tube has teeth at one end. Oh, ladies, come on over here. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll do that in a bit. The tube has teeth at one end and a hook at the other end. The hook end is always up. The teeth end is always eating the balls, right? So this is the part that goes around and munches the balls. Boom, 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 boom. Pick it up like this and then dump the hook end into the machine. It's really important not to load the machine um, when, the, when it's completely empty and it's still running. If it's completely empty, I want you to shut it off first because if people don't expect it and they could get hit by the ball. Okay? Now we're going to be doing continuous loading because we're always going to have somebody at the net and we're always going to have somebody picking up. The person picking up will have this tube. Right? So we're going to do a rotation. I'm going to teach you how to rotate. This is a safety thing. I need to teach you how to rotate before we can use the machine. So I'm going to get Val at the T. Val is going to be at the T. Don is going to be right here at the post. You're going to be our picker-upper. right? So you guys can go stand beside Val. So you're going to hit three balls. Then you're going to exit out this side. Okay? Then you're going to come in as she leaves. Okay? You're going to hit three balls. You're going to exit out this side. Right? As you come around here, you're going to pick up three balls. Use your hand. We don't need the tube for this many people. And just put them in the machine and then go get back in line. Okay? That's what we're going to do. We're actually not going to need the tube yet. We'll, we'll need it later with, once we have uh, fewer people. All right. So Val's going to hit three balls. Or well, attempt to hit three balls. Good. And she's out, and Dawn is going to come in. One, two, three. And Dawn is out, and Joan is in. Pay attention, Joan. Ball's firing. One. Two, three, and Don is out, and Kate's in. One, two, three, and Don, Kate's out, and Lynn is in. One, two. Three. Okay, rotate. One. Two. Three. Okay, let it go. One. Two. Three. Okay. Out. One. Two. Three. One. Two. Three. All right. Everybody understands the rotation now. So we're going to leave three people on this court, and I'm going to take two people over to that court, and then at some point we're going to switch. So everybody's going to get an opportunity to work on some forehands and some backhands. Okay? Now, when, there, when we have three-person rotations, everything is going to be driven by the person who's picking up the balls. 
because the person who's picking up the balls, if they haven't picked up the three and they're not here, they're not, they're not going to be ready to switch, right? So the person picking up the balls is going to determine how fast the switches happen. You might hit three balls, you might hit six balls, you might hit nine balls. You really want to wait until this person's ready so that one person can go out, the next person can be in, and then we can have a third person in line. Does that make sense? One person will be, yeah, because one person's here, one person's here, and one person's picking up the ball. If, if by picking up the balls is what you mean by... No, it, it's self-running. It's just going to keep running. Okay? All right, so I'll take you two over here, and the three of you can stay here, and I will come around and give you corrections. Just let me get them started, okay? All right, are we ready? I'm going to turn the machine on. Remember, these are mostly forehands on this machine. Yeah, do about three. Oh, sorry, Joan, you're going to be in. And remember, we want to rotate this way, so the person who's waiting should be over here. Now, there's only two of you, so we should do about 10. We'll do about 10. Yeah. One. So you can count out loud. Two. Four. So when she starts to get to about seven, you want to go up and get in line. There it is. All right, I want to come right up to the blue line. There we go. Nice. Good. Okay, everybody. I want to try and get my belly button right in the line of the ball. So my belly button is here. I'm going to try and get my belly button right in the line of the ball. or under the line of the ball, as the case may be. Because I don't want to be, I don't want to be reaching for the ball. So I don't want to be reaching for the ball. I want to be in line with the ball, right? So wherever the ball's coming, I want to try and get in front of the ball, almost like I'm going to catch it, right? So I want to try and get in front of the ball. Okay, come on in, whoever's next.
Don't don't swing at it. Just block it. Yeah. So you're swinging at it, Lynn. So don't swing. Just block. Give it a little push. Not a slap. Just a little push. Ready, ready, Val. Okay, you're in, Val. Okay, go out the side. What was your question, Val? Yeah. So just keep hold the bracket strong, nice and solid. Keep your elbow down. Keep your elbow down. Good, Lynn. Oh, okay. Be really careful about bending over in front of the oh, machine. Yeah. I don't want you well, to get no, shot in the head. <laughs> Are you counting out loud? Okay, let me hop in. I want to show you guys. I'm going to de demonstrate a little more. Oops. All right, so I'm starting in the ready position with the racket in front of me, and I'm trying to step close to the ball. I don't want to reach out far away. I want to stay close to the ball so that I don't have to move my elbow away from my, bo Oops. my body if I can. All right, so I'm trying to keep my elbow fairly close to my body. And I'm not swinging at it. I'm just taking the ball out in front of me. Oh, that one I had to reach on because it was getting away from me. Come on, ball. One more. There it comes. All right, so I'm trying to keep my elbow bent and relatively close to my body. Hey, let's work on that. Watch. Good. Good. Both hands together. There we go. Good. Nice. Back together. Good. Good job. Here, you can use this. This will make it a little easier for you. You got lots of bending in today, eh? Yes. Very nice. Good job. What? Okay. That thing's made of plastic, it can fall.
put them straight back in the machine. There you go. No, put them right back in the machine. There you go. That's a reminder to put them in the machine. Good job, those are blocks. Remember not to swing. We're not swinging, we're just blocking today. Okay? Yeah, that's a block, that's awesome. Awesome, okay. Let's pick up and then we're gonna have the water break and a meeting in the lobby. Can you shut off the machine, top switch? Top switch, good job. Okay, we're gonna pick up, we're gonna change machines, and we're gonna have a little meeting in the lobby. Yeah. Just, straight. Oh, just try and get it to go down if you can. Keep it low, always. All right, while we're having our drink and our rest, we'll have a little conversation in the lobby here. How, for how many people is this the first time you've ever used a ball machine? You guys have used a ball machine before? Okay, any questions about the ball machine? Well, presumably it gets speeded up at some point. Speed up what? The, uh, the speed of the balls? Or the the or the, uh, uh, interval? the interval? Yeah. I can speed up the interval. Um, the reason I have it on a slow interval is I have new people who've never used a ball machine before here today. Exactly. And if the interval gets going too quickly, then people, one, people don't have a chance to get set. Uh, and two, if they forget what they're doing and they start talking, sometimes they forget that there's another ball about to fire. So it's just for safety reasons I have it turned down. When you come in to practice on your own, you can turn the interval up as high as you want. Uh, but for, for lessons, I, I keep it a little bit slow. That's a good question, though. Other questions? Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the tables are adjustable. Um, uh, the tables are adjustable. You can move the machine forward, back. You can turn the speed up. There's little feet on the table. You can, or on the uh, machine itself, you can up, raise and lower the arc of the ball. Um, the balls have a big part of it, too. So if you notice on this machine with the green and yellow balls, the green balls are coming out really high and the yellow balls are coming out low. Um, and that's because the green balls are a little bit softer, so they get squeezed by the machine. So when they come out, they pop 
and they go a little higher. The yellow balls were brand new. I just put them in today, so they're really, really crisp uh, and they're hard, so they're not flexing yet by the wheels. So over the next couple of weeks, they'll soften up. No, I well, you probably have to set up the net. I set up the ball machine and calibrate it for the the student. And uh, if I'm here early enough, that I set up the net too. But often the student sets up the net while I set up the machine. Between the two of us, we get stuff going. So uh, it only takes a few minutes. Uh, good question. Other questions? Okay, so we're going to go back in. Um, I want to. What was the main thing I wanted to do? I've forgotten what the main. I, I'll remember as soon as, <laughs> as soon as I get in there. I'll remember what it was that I wanted to do. We are going to switch machines. Um, oh yes, uh, and we're going to volley towards targets now. So there's no point in volleying to the middle of the court. We want to either volley deep towards the baseline or short towards the net. So that's what we're going to work on now is trying to control where our volleys go. The safest place to hit the ball, of course, is the middle of the court. And when you first start playing as a beginner, you want to try and get the ball to the middle of the court. But after you've accomplished that, and everybody here has, then we want to try and play with distance a little bit. We use our volleys to keep people back or to surprise them when they're back and hit it short to force them to come running up towards the net. Mm -hmm. The sides you mean? Yeah, ideally short and to the side. Um, but short in, in the court is your first priority. When you try to go for the sideline, sometimes you're going to hit it out. So that, that could cost you. So let's go back in and I'll do a little demonstration. We'll do one here on the uh, on the on the uh, on the green machine first. Where's my racket? Okay. We're going to go over to the green and yellow machine. Val, will you be my assistant again, please? All right, so the, this machine's going to fire balls. The low balls are pretty easy for me to put short. The high balls are pretty hard for me to put short. So the high balls I'm probably going to put towards the back of the court. Um, go ahead, you can turn it on. Thank you. So these are mostly backhands. That was a low ball, so pretty easy for me to put a low ball in the front of the court. Here's another low one, pretty easy for me to keep it in the front of the court. So I'm just putting those into the kitchen. Here's a high one, so that one I put to the back of the court. Low one, so keep it out. See that one out, Val? It was short, but it went out. This is kind of in between. And then a low one, oops. That's always the danger. Okay, one more and then you can shut it off, Val. That was a high one, so I put it right at Val. Okay. All right, so that's what we're going to practice now. Some short, some long, you can experiment with different things. Um, now, if you were on that machine, you're going to be here. And if you were on this machine, you're going to be there. We're going to switch one more time in about uh, 10 minutes. So everybody will have a chance to do this short and long on both machines. Okay, all right. Here we go. You want to be up first, Lynn? Okay, remember these are mostly forehands. And they're faster. That, our rotation is this way, so when you're waiting in line, you want to wait at that post. Good, good short ball. I'm going to turn the interval up a little bit. I'm turning the interval up a little bit so the balls are going to come out faster. 
the distance between the balls, the time between the balls is going to be shorter now as I turn the interval off. Okay? Yeah, they are tough. Yeah. So make sure you have one foot on either side of that green line, Val. It depends. Sometimes you're going to move out of position. Good job. Nice and short, Donna. Very nice short ball. It was very nice. Nice short one. Nine. I'm going to move you over here now, Val. I'm going to start rotating people so you can go get in line right there. I'm going to start rotating people. You're going to have an extra person now. Yeah, you can head over. So count out loud. No, you're doing 10 here. So four, five, count out loud, Val. Six, she needs to be able to hear you. Remember when you're counting, she needs to be able to hear you over the machine. So when you're counting, she needs to be able to hear you over the machine.
There you go. Okay, Lynn, you can head over there. We'll get in line by that post. Okay, you're going to go get in line at the other machine now. Awesome. Thank you very much. I got it. There you go, Val. Good job. Ah, take it up front. That's good. Okay, you're in. All right, we're going to do tens now, and we're going to work on you getting the ball out front. Can you shut the machine off for one second, please? Thank you. Awesome. Okay. So right now, Kate, you're taking the ball back here. I want you to take it with your elbow in front of your body. All right. So you need to get it out. Uh, this needs to be a little bit bent, but I need it to be out here in front of your rib cage because right now you're taking everything back here, which means your arm can't move this way. All right. So you want it out in front of your body. Exactly. Okay. All right. You can turn it back on. Joan, you can head over to the other machine. Oh, actually, no, it's not your turn. You're going to stay here for a few more minutes. I'm going to send Kate over. My mistake. That's better, Kate. One more. Awesome. Okay, switch. I'm going to send you over to this machine now. Keep it out front there. You're doing great. Very good, Kate. Nice. There you go. I'm use that.
You're in the kitchen. You're in the kitchen. Very nice, Kate. Okay, Val, I'm going to head you over there. All right, move up right up to the blue line. There we go. Much better. That's good. Excellent. You can head over to the other machine now. Nice, Val. Good. Good. Okay, Kate, I'm going to send you over to that machine, okay? You can head over to this machine, Donna. So remember, the first thing you want to do is step towards the line of the ball. You want to try and get your whole body in front of the line of the ball if you not can. Just, not just reach? Well, no, you don't want to reach, right? So you want to be close enough that you can get your racket out from a strong position here, right? You don't want to be 
for reaching out because you can avoid it, right? So you're, what you're doing now is you're reaching and then stepping. What I want to see is step and then reach. Much better, Val. Awesome. Okay, let's do a pickup. Uh, I'm going to give you the hopper. If you can throw all the balls in the hopper, please. Put all the balls from the machine into here, please. Thank you. Awesome. Okay, let's do a pickup. Pick up all the orange balls, put them in this basket, and then we're going to have a little discussion. Awesome. So come on in. Let's have a little chat. All right. So today was, for some of you, an introduction to the ball machine. Uh, it was also an opportunity to practice your blocking. The ball machine isn't good for a lot of things, but it's really good for blocking. It's an awesome tool for blocking. So I use it a lot for my blocking class. Any questions about what we did today? Um, well, it, it, it's very good for grooving your stroke. But there's a lot more to a racket sports than grooving your stroke. So it's very good for what we call stationary drills when you're standing still. But it's not very good for sequences or moving your feet. Or um, so let's say we're let's say that we're let's talk about blocking specifically. The machine is firing the ball consistently at a consistent rate of speed. It's not super consistent in its directional control but you have a pretty good sense of where the ball is going. Whereas if you're, if you're playing with Val, she's going to do stuff that you don't expect. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? The other thing too is the ball machine is firing stuff. You're not getting any visual information. So you can't see the length of their backswing. You can't see the, ra the racket path. You can't see the contact point. You can't hear the sound that the ball makes. So it's not good for that sort of thing. But it, it's good for block, like learning the technique of blocking. 
um, it's, it's good for stationary strokes. So it's, the ball machine is more useful at the beginner novice level than it is at the intermediate and advanced level. So, um, but you'll see all kinds of TikToks and YouTube videos and, and uh, stuff trying to sell you ball machines, telling you that they are the best thing in the world. Generally, you're smarter off to rent one than to buy one um, for most people. For most people, well, here you, you so you most facilities you can book a court with a ball machine. That's what you need for a rental. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the other thing to remember about a ball machine is they they have about a three year life, and then they're obsolete because a new model has come out that does more things or better things. And so you end up stuck with a thousand dollar machine that you've used twelve times. So better, you're generally better off to rent than to buy ball machines. But that's my advice anyway. Uh, any questions about blocking we did today? Uh, that's a good question. Can I blow your racket? Okay. So, if I'm prepared with my racket in the ready, or my racket in the ready position, the ball's coming on my face. I just turn my back end towards it and block it, right? But you can also do a slide, right? Slide away, right? You can do a slide in, right? You can duck and do a periscope or a scorpion. This is an actual yeah, shot. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you always want to have, especially when you're up at the net, you always want to have your paddle between your face and the ball, wherever the ball is. And that gives you an opportunity to be above the ball when it comes to you. If your racket's always down here and the ball's coming towards you, you're always coming up under the ball, which causes you to pop it up. Whereas if your racket position is high, you can protect your face and you can block down on the ball. I am like the worst person in the world for low racket head because I played squash for so many years, right? So this, this is kind of my habitual ready position. And I'm, I'm learning myself now to prepare the racket higher so that I'm hitting on top of the ball rather than under the ball a lot. So that was a good question. Thank you for your racket. Any other questions about what we did today? Yep. Uh, most court shoes are online now. Uh, the big sporting goods stores will typically have one model right at the beginning of the season. Um, and that model is either, like it's a standard men's width, but it's good for, it's good for most old, uh, ladies over 40 uh, and uh, most juniors. Very narrow foot? Okay, then you're going to want a lady shoe specifically. You're going to want to look for a sports uh, racket-specific sporting goods store. You may have to order online. Um, it, unfortunately, there just isn't a, a badminton shops so will carry them. You're just looking for, are you going to be using it for indoors or outdoors? I would, I would you need both shoes? Yeah. So if you're playing on hardwood, you're going to need a, spe a shoe uh, specifically for the hardwood. But if you're playing on vinyl, or if you're playing indoors at like Linwood Ranch, uh, then you can get away with an outdoor shoe. So, yeah, and it's not like it was before COVID when there was lots of shoes around. Everything has gone online now, unless it's a major mover. Um, so people just have to become accustomed to doing more stuff online. You don't if you buy the if you've got the word pickleball in it, you're going to pay twenty to thirty dollars more than you should. You're looking for you're looking for a good court shoe, yeah. Outdoors tennis shoes work just as well for as pickleball shoes, and they're cheaper. Outdoor, just running? Oh, tennis shoes. Tennis shoes, yeah. Out, outdoor court shoes. I I call them indoor court shoes and outdoor court shoes. But on the online, you'll they'll be called tennis shoes or badminton shoes, indoor court oh, shoes. Oh, running shoes are not running shoes are tipped up. The heels are raised. It's designed for movement in one direction. Um, so you, you try to move backwards, you can trip. Um, they're not designed for side-to-side -side moving. So I'm wearing a running shoe today because I'm teaching. Uh, if I was playing, I'd be wearing a court shoe. There's also no traction in a running shoe in this room. It's very, very slippery. Whereas a court shoe, you're stuck to the floor. That is an outdoor court shoe. Uh, yeah, you can wear it outside. Um, if the floors are clean in most places and your shoes are clean, you're going to be able to get away with it. Uh, but if the floor is, especially in here, if it gets dusty, that's a hard shoe to play in. You're going to be sliding. So if you feel yourself sliding, you know you need a better shoe. Any other questions? All good questions.
Did you have fun today? Yeah. Glad, you, glad you enjoyed it. Um, so I do want to say one more thing. So this class now, the 250 class, is either going to be, you can tell from looking at the, the sign up, whether it's a clinic or a practice, right? If there's a clinic scheduled at the same time, like we will schedule a clinic at the same time. So it'll say in your, it'll say in your sign up for T250, it'll say today, like today it said uh, C304V or something. It said today was a clinic. That means that people from the outside can sign up for the clinic and they would also be in this class. Right, but the clinics are 25 bucks. You guys are members here, so you want to sign up for the training group because that's only going to be one punch. So it's eight dollars for you compared to 25 dollars from somebody coming from outside. Right, so I noticed you are registered for a clinic. Yeah. Uh, you want to, so you can't register yet for the training group because the training groups you can only see two weeks ahead. Right. But that clinics you can see like two months ahead. So just remember, so you can go ahead and cancel yourself out of that clinic. Just remember that if there's a clinic offered at this time and you see it, the training group is also going to be here doing exactly the same thing. So you guys want to sign up for the training groups. The clinics are going to be for people who aren't members here who are signing up for clinics. But we'll all be doing the same thing. We'll be doing it together anyway. So, All right? Awesome. See you guys maybe next uh, Are we on? No, next week? Yeah, we have a clinic next week. Yeah. There's a tough month. This is a tough month for this group because the so much so much of the facility is booked. So. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Have a good day. Nice to meet you, Kate.